Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is for us this morning to be able to eat and drink at your table and remember your son's death and to proclaim that death until he comes. And we look forward to that union with him, which will be a, all of our reunion together with him in the air and to be with him forever. How good that day will be, Lord. But you have us here today. Give us courage and faith and wisdom to live in a manner that is pleasing with you today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The men are going to make their way up the aisles here. If you do not have a Bible, they would like to put one in your hand. Just slip your hand in the air, and you can get one of those from them. If you do not have a Bible, please feel free to keep that one. It is our gift to you. And let's turn to Psalm 142 this morning as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper or for communion. Psalm 142. It says, this is a maskil of David when he was in the cave, a prayer. I cry aloud with my voice to Yahweh. I make supplication with my voice to Yahweh. I pour out my complaint before him. I declare my trouble before him. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, you knew my path. In the way where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see. For there is no one who regards me. There is no escape for me. No one cares for my soul. I cried out to you, O Yahweh. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Give heed to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring my soul out of prison so that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. On Jesus last night with his disciples, he gave to them a way to remember him while he was going to be away from them. He gave them bread, and he said it would remind them of his body that was given in death for them at the cross, and he gave them wine. It would remind them of his shed blood at the cross, that secured their forgiveness of sin. And this remembrance is given by Jesus for all who believe in Christ alone for their salvation. In a moment, a tray with a small cracker and juice will come down your row. And believers in Jesus Christ, we encourage you to receive that bread and the cup and remember Jesus' death in our place. We are to humbly evaluate ourselves confess and forsake our sin and worshipfully celebrate the salvation that Jesus secured for us who have trusted in him alone. This morning, if, if you have not yet trusted in Christ alone to secure for you forgiveness of sin, then please listen carefully this morning and let the bread and the cup pass you by when it comes down your row. Consider your need for Jesus Christ, first of all today. You must come to a place first where you see that you are in great danger without him before a holy God. You must first trust in him before you can then remember him in his death. Ask all the questions you need and consider coming to Christ today. And we're going to let this psalm that I just read prepare our hearts to remember Christ. I'm going to make three observations about David's God in his difficulty, in his trial. And then we'll use those to help us remember Christ. First, God knew the difficulty that David was in. David was actually in a cave, hiding. Traps had been set for him that he couldn't see in verse 3. He had persecutors that were too strong for him, verse 6. He said that he was troubled, verse 2. That his spirit was overwhelmed, verse 3. He was brought very low, verse 6. His soul was imprisoned, and yet David in a cave cries out to Yahweh as if Yahweh is in the cave with him, because he is. He lays out his complaint before Yahweh. 
And he says Yahweh knew his path of difficulty. Verse 3. So God knew the difficulty David was in. Secondly, God made it clear to David where his help was and was not to be found. In verse 4, David says, look to the right and see, there is no one who regards me. There's no escape for me. No one cares for my soul. There is no man, no person for him to turn to. In fact, David was even convinced that he was himself not strong enough to deliver himself from his persecutors in verse 6. They are too strong for me. So God made it clear to David where his help was not found. And obviously, he knew that his help was only in Yahweh. In verses 1, 2, 5, 6, and 7, he cries out to Yahweh alone. Verse 5, I cried out to you. You are my refuge. You are my portion. You give heed to my cry. You deliver me. You bring my soul out of prison. Help for David was clearly and only found in God and in no one else, not even in himself. So God made it clear to David where his help was and was not to be found. And lastly, God gave David hope for better days to come with God. In David's moment in the now, in the present, David wanted escape. He didn't want to be where he was. He wanted deliverance from the adversity he longed for days to come when he would be freed from his trouble. He longed for days when he could more fully enjoy God as his portion, verse 5. He longed for days when he would be full of thanksgiving, verse 7. He longed for days with sweet fellowship with other righteous believers when God dealt bountifully with him eventually. God gave David hope in his adversity for better days to come with God. So God knew the difficulty David was in. God made it clear to David where his help was and was not to be found. And God gave David hope for better days to come with God. And this is our God. This is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Believer, did not Jesus know where you were in your sin, in your guilt, in your despair? Did he not know that you were ensnared in your own sin? Did he not know that you were troubled overwhelmed in your spirit by your guilt, brought very low, imprisoned? And did he not come to you there and call you to himself in the gospel? Did he not say, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden? I know what you are and I will give you rest. Did he not know where you were in your unsaved, helpless condition? And if you were in adversity, if you were in your own trial, does he not also know where you are today? Remember this this morning about him. He knew where you were, and today he knows still where you are. Secondly, did not Jesus make it clear to you where your help was and was not to be found? Was it not clear to you when he saved you that no one else could help you but him? that no one else could address your sin problem, your wrath problem, your guilt problem? Did he not make it painstakingly especially clear to you that you yourself had no resources within to remedy your problem with God? Did he not in the gospel open your eyes to see him alone bearing away your sin and God's wrath? Did he not show you the gift of his righteousness alone that he has to give that is pleasing to God? And did he not himself then give you the faith to believe him and receive that gift of righteousness? And if you are facing adversity today, believer, can he not make it clear again to you where your help is and is not found? He loves to make it clear where your help is and where it is not. And lastly, has not Jesus given you hope for better days with him to come? When we eat the bread and we drink the cup, we proclaim his death until he, what, comes. And what a much better day that will be for us. We just sang it. Yes, now we have received Christ, but we have received him while the world still gives us many troubles and no peace but he has given us a hope that we will see him as he is, 
and we will become like him, and then we will enjoy him as our portion in ways that we just can't right now. He knows how to hold us securely for that day. And in your trial, if you're in one right now, in your own difficulty, search out again for this hope, relocate it, and fix your eyes on it again. Better days with him are coming. So believer, when you have prepared your heart to remember your savior, you may eat and drink on your own. I'll be back up in a moment to pray and close our time together. Men, will you please come and serve us?